Welcome to the Minx and Muse podcast. I'm your host, Crimson Minx, creatrix of Minx and Muse, a dark feminine playhouse where we awaken our innate magic through esoerotic dance and witchcraft. Welcome to the Portal of Enchantment. Welcome back to the Minx and Muse podcast. This is going to be our first real solo episode with me, which I would love to do about one of these solo ones monthly around our studio archetype of the month. So we at Minx and Muse monthly choose a new archetype that we're going to work with. And I always gain so much insight and wisdom and eureka moments as we work our way through the archetype in our classes and workshops and just studio discussions. And I thought this would be a really cool time capsule to start capturing all of these experiences around the archetypes. And also I have tried doing this on social media, but I tend to be really long winded, which is not the right format for a social media. So this longer form content, I think is going to really be fun to work with. So now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about the pleasure priestess. So first and foremost, I'm just going to read what we presented as the embodiment of this archetype when we shared with all of our members at the beginning of the month. So the pleasure priestess prioritizes sensuous embodied pleasure and chooses to fill their own cup before sharing their energy with others. They allow for self-reflection in order to unearth their authentic, healthy desires and don't base these desires on societal expectations. They honor the difference between sensuous turn-on versus numbing escapism and respect the power of feeling into one's body and all of its sensory experiences. They understand the difference between comfort and pleasure and that one can experience heightened pleasure by moving beyond their place of comfort. They know that experiencing sensual pleasure is their birthright and part of living as a holistic human and is therefore not something that needs to be earned. Instead, they embrace this dark feminine somatic energy and choose to embrace their body, titillate their senses and enjoy indulging in life. And so when we present this archetypal uh energy summation we always also include a kind of the shadow aspects of of the archetype so in terms of the pleasure priestess the pleasure priestess falls into shadow territory when they mistake pleasure for unhealthy excessive or addictive behaviors When they allow sensory experiences to control them rather than support them, they have handed over their personal power. This is a form of nihilistic wounding and ultimately can disconnect them from their bodily and sensory sovereignty. In addition, one is missing the mark with this archetype when they confuse disembodied disassociation with sensuous pleasure. Things like mindless scrolling or watching of black mirrors, a.k.a. screens, excessive consumption of things like alcohol, drugs, food, shopping, sex, etc., or choosing not to show up for oneself, specifically when relating to authentic desires, with the justification of self-care are not forms of pleasure, but rather forms of avoidance and escapism. So that's the the official verbiage around the pleasure priestess. But I wanted to go into a few points that have arisen over the past month and get to go a little deeper. So the first thing that I was really wanting to hit home this month is that the pleasure priestess is concerned with pleasure as it pertains to embodied sensuous pleasure. 
So a quick story, I teach an intro to SO eroticism series and the homework for week one is for always the students to over the following week, do something that allows them to tap into their sensuous pleasure, something that they perhaps usually wouldn't do. I suggest things like ritual baths or rolling around in nature or cooking a indulgent meal or something in the bedroom. And I always lead with Remember, this is a sensuously pleasurable experience. So if organizing your bookshelf is pleasure to you, this is not what we're talking about. But what I found that I needed to add on to that was this idea of let's make this experience a present embodied experience versus something that we turn to to kind of escape or get out of our body. And the example that kept coming up with students when I would check in the next week and they would say, oh, I laid on the couch and I watched movies or Netflix and it wasn't what I was really looking for. Because here's the thing. I'm not saying that those aren't relaxing activities. And I'm not saying that it's not a form of comfort. They absolutely are. But when I'm talking about pleasure, I'm talking about something that puts you in your body, allows you to like feel your body, feel emotions, um, as opposed to just being in our mind or beyond our mind and being in this form of like complete escapism. Now, again, no judgment cast on like watching films or things like that. I enjoy it myself. However, it was really interesting to see how people were able to easily confuse that. And this idea of comfort being an exalted form of pleasure. And I know like pleasure can just be somatics and people could bring different definitions to the table. But what we're concerned about in Minx and Muse is embodied sensuous pleasure. And the idea of pleasure is that it can really allow us to energetically fill our cups and to connect back into our bodies after existing in a world where we can be constantly drained or having to prioritize our mind and our logic, um, whether that's through our work or raising families or just, you know, existing as humans. And with pleasure, what it allows us to do is to get out of our head into our body. It allows us to drop back in, find that that sensory connection that ultimately as witches connects us to our deeper intuition and inner oracle. Um, but it also fills our energetic cup as opposed to, have you ever noticed when you are just completely drained energetically that if you just, you just want to go lay on the couch, but when you do that, it doesn't really seem to shift anything. It just seems to be the only thing you're energetically capable of doing and a state in which you just continually perpetually uh, continue to exist in. Um, whereas, and this is something that a lot of burnout experts will say um, that, and I learned this from my friend, Karen, we were talking about this recently, that when you're in burnout, the experts say that as opposed to just blanking out, escapism, sc mindlessly scrolling on social media, what you really have to force yourself to do is to get out of this comfort place or this ease place and push yourself to do something that you formerly enjoyed, something that will energetically feed you. I always recommend a dance class or some kind of movement experience, but this could sim simply be going out in nature and taking a walk. Um, you know, this really could be a beautiful meal in a beautiful environment without like a scroll and just getting present back in your body. This is how we revive ourselves. And this is how we drop back into the human experience. And it's, it's something that I don't hear people talk a lot about because I don't think if we've ever really considered the difference between like ease, comfort, relaxing, and pleasure. And something else that came up uh, during some of our coven discussions this month, in, which I found really interesting, were people struggling with this idea of pleasure versus overindulgence and 
unhealthy addictions, things like where do we draw the line between, oh, it's like within my pleasure to have like a glass of wine and a beautiful meal and to, you know, perhaps like have an intimate experience with myself or a partner versus like, where does that get out of control? And where is it all of a sudden, again, I'm experiencing the numbing. Um, I need it as opposed to I choose, choose it. And that I think is something that is probably experienced by a majority of humans at some point in their life, this idea of addiction and this idea of escapism, escapism and numbing through some sort of addictive behavior. So that's something that we have to keep in mind. Because let's be honest, is it pleasurable like that chocolate cake? Is it pleasurable when you've eaten so much of it that you have a stomach ache and you feel sick? Is it pleasurable that glass of wine when all of a sudden like you're wasted and stumbling around? is the sex pleasurable when it's something that you just have to experience and make your way through in order to get to like a means to an end or that you can't concentrate on other areas of your life and it's kind of controlling you rather you controlling it so with pleasure i mean we have to tread lightly we have to tread consciously i'd like to say um this idea of are we are we using pleasure as a form of escapism? Are we saying that, oh, it's pleasurable for me to avoid certain situations because, in fact, we'd rather just not put ourselves outside of our comfort zones? Um, are we using things like self-care and, oh, I'm listening to the pleasure of my body right now um, to avoid things that we truly do desire pursuing something that is like an authentic desire of ours. And it's again, conscious awareness. And I think pleasure can be so powerful, but it can be something that can be abused as well. And it's interesting to hear from a lot of members how they thought this was just going to be an easy breezy month. Like, oh my gosh, I just get to experience pleasure all the time. But when we went deeper, as we do with our dark feminine energy here at Minx and Muse, we got to get a deeper reflection into, oh my gosh, maybe what I was perceiving as like pleasure wasn't that embodied, sensuous, healthy pleasure of the pleasure priestess. Maybe it was something that was way more unhealthy, way more addictive or escapist. And the last thing that I want to chat about is the idea of motivating oneself through pleasure. And this is something that's relevant to the studio because we have a lot of dance and movement classes. Um, and we even have, I would say this would apply to our mystical and our witchy classes. This idea, can we motivate ourselves to show up uh, based purely on experiencing embodied sensuous pleasure in the moment versus having to motivate ourselves to do something based on something like I, I have to show up because I have to get better or I have to learn that thing that I saw or I have to make sure I look a certain way or I have to get a video of myself for social media. Those are actually pretty mainstream, easy uh, I would say masculine oriented ways to motivate ourselves. And of course it's effective. My argument always is we work in our masculine, operate in our masculine throughout a lot of our life, especially in our careers. If we are raising families, if we have to like navigate government or judicial systems or systems in general, and why are we then taking on hobbies that will further drain us and drag us into this further perpetuation of having to achieve or, you know, logic or linear or, or judge ourselves through things? And I think it can be a really beautiful mindset change to prioritize pleasure in some of our extracurricular activities. Um, it's impossible to live in a state in pleasure all the time or in a state of pleasure all the time. And that was a question that actually came up in our online group, the multiverse. And, you know, I feel like it, I can't stay in pleasure. Well, I think that's an, that's kind of a difficult expectation. We can't always exist in sensuous turn on, you know, but what we can do is, you know, navigate these non-pleasurable areas and aspects of our life 
as best we can. But what we can then do is balance out and and kind of re-energize ourselves by then through our hobbies, our extracurricular activities, or our intentions outside of these areas of our life, prioritizing pleasure, motivating ourselves to show up. For example, for your dance class, can you motivate yourself to show up simply to feel good in your body and feeling juicy in your movement? Can that be your prime motivator? And if not, why? And that can really help us reflect on maybe noticing what is most important to us in our life and maybe realizing habits that perhaps are holding us back from feeling just more, because who doesn't want to feel pleasure, right? We may not even realize, oh my gosh, I have these opportunities to tap into pleasure and I'm opting out. So these are just a few thoughts that I have had around the pleasure priestess this month. It's been a really deceivingly difficult archetype to really connect with and embody. And so, you know, I will share some of my favorite pleasure practices obviously sensual embodied dance for the sake of dance, for the sake of movement. I'm also just being present and tapping into our body. If you can do some kind of self-touch ritual, these are wonderful after baths or showers and doing like some kind of self-massage or self-touch ritual can just really help us ground in and feel. And always considering the sensory experiences around us, right? So can we add like a scent um, or like a taste or um, some kind of texture that has more of a turn-on factor to us? We actually, in our workshop, we have a master workshop every month around our archetype uh, for our multiverse virtual group. And we agreed that we we were all going to light the good candles and bring out the good lotions and oils that we, for some reason, never feel like we can use because they're too nice and they're too good. And we're being reserved um, in case for some very important experience in the future. So um, perhaps breaking those out and, and incorporating those just into your, your mundane routine. So just a few ideas. Movement and dance is always going to be my favorite to tap in and feel good. So um, this is this is where I think I'm going to leave it. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this these solo formats. I'm always here for requests, but very different not having someone to chat to. So thank you for your grace as I'm figuring this all out. And hopefully there will be many more to come. Have a pleasurable rest of your morning, day, evening, whenever you're watching or listening and stay in your magic. And I'll see you next time. Mwah. Thank you for joining me for the Minx and Muse podcast. You can find show notes and learn more about the studio at www minxandmuse.com As a reminder, it is our birthright to transform, expand, and safely exist as sensual, conscious, and empowered creatures. I'll see you